Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars, Session 2, Mass and Family Modeling, Part 3, Basic Mass Parameters. Okay, so if you're following on from the previous video, um, you might want to save and close all of the files because we're going to start from fresh. So, okay, and start an architectural template project, just have something to load into and then as in the previous video I'm going to hover over new and then I'm going to go to conceptual mass open my metric mass and come into this environment okay so we saw in the previous video that we have work planes I've just turned show back on again so I can see which work plane and it stays visible when it's selected and I'm the next uh, thing we're going to try and do is make a series of design options and we're going to do some very simple design options but we're going to make them parametric and by which I mean we're going to be able to control the sizes automatically using the properties of the object rather than it just being a fixed mass where we come in and make changes and then reload it back into the project to see those changes applied we're going to build in some sort of intelligence into the object and some sort of flexibility so we're going to do a very basic thing um, we're going to create a uh, essentially a cube that we control the width the depth and the height of and we're also going to add material parameters to that as well so to start with jump to your level one plan so we're looking down onto those two vertical work planes this environment um, as I said previously is a hundred meters by a hundred meters roughly and anything you build is brought into the project's environment via the center point here so let's do a locking move that means that anything that we build in this environment stays centered around that point as I explained previously, everything works on work planes, so we're going to make some new work planes. So very simply, select one of the vertical work planes, use your copy tool, pick it up, keep it horizontal and drop it. Doesn't matter about the dimension for now. Click off to deselect, reselect the center one, copy it the other way, drop that. Repeat for the horizontal. Okay, so we've got four work planes. Uh, best practice is to name the work planes. Quite a simple process. Select the work plane and in the properties give it a name. I'm going to call these north, south, east and west. And you see the name now pops up on the work plane. So just go through, click off, check it's worked for you. Okay, so why do we do that? If I want to select which work plane to work on, I can now go to my set button and in my list of work planes that are active, those are now listed. If I hadn't named them, they wouldn't be in this list. So if I want to draw on my north work plane, I can select that now and it will say which elevation do I want to go in to look at it and I can jump to that view okay also in the 3d environment what's quite a nice thing to do is if you want to draw on these work planes you can select them and then start drawing like that I'm just going to undo but also if I want to be more accurate I can use the viewer which once you've got a, a work plane selected if I click the viewer on I get a face on version of that so you see if I was to draw onto that work plane now it appears in this environment there I can make changes in this environment so just stretch that out and I get a change in that environment so that's quite a nice thing close that down so the work plane viewer is um, quite a powerful little thing but that's not what we're doing right now okay 
so we've got four work planes and we've got our two original vertical work planes we're going to leave those alone and just use those to center our model and to do that we're going to use uh, an equalizing dimension so jump to level one we've used this in previous videos if you've witnessed this before use my align dimension I'm just going to change my scale so you can see it a little clearer align dimension I'm going to go click 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 and then click on nothing to drop it and while it's still selected I'm going to hit the EQ button it's just above the dimensions that turns it from a reporting dimension into an equalizing parameter I can do the same again down that side press my EQ and escape off now don't be tempted to go all the way around your design you will start getting clashes because if you've equalized on one side if you equalize on the other side then you get an error message because one is pulling against the other but what this means now is if I move one of my work planes and all I'm doing is clicking left clicking hold and drag to naturally get that move you can see no matter what I do to the work planes they're always centered around that point so that's just a little piece of keeping tidy essentially while we're in this view let's add a parameter now parameters are what are used to drive the work planes that's our as, as a designer that is our control over the environment we don't actually have control over the geometry itself what we're going to do is control the work planes and then we're going to lock geometry to those work planes and so the work planes control the geometry we control the work planes the work planes control the geometry and you'll see what I mean now so let's add a couple of parameters if I use my align dimension again this time I'm going to grab the overall width of the building drop that down there and the overall depth of the building and drop that down there escape off reselect my width and notice I get the option to add a label to this at the moment it's not labeled it's just a reporting dimension so if I click that down I can add a parameter now I'm going to call this width and I'm going to leave it as a type parameter we're going to talk about type and instance um, before the end of the video but leave it as a type parameter for now okay that Re click off to deselect repeat by selecting and adding a parameter and calling it depth leave that as a type parameter as well okay I'm going to jump to the 3d view now you can see those two parameters are there and once you create a parameter you should do what's called flexing the parameter to check it's working for you to do that go to your family types button and you'll see those two parameters are now listed here uh, the dimension parameters so if I was to go into my width and make it 50 meters instead of 74 meters hit apply you see in the project environment that parameter has driven my work planes check my depth is working as well check take that down to 50 and that has worked as well okay so every time you make a parameter best practice is to check that that parameter works by going into family types and flexing the parameter it's very difficult if you miss out that as a process and you get too far into your design and one of your early parameters doesn't work it's very difficult sometimes to go back and fix that you've often gone too far and you lose all of that work um, so it's best to do it as you go along we'll now add a piece of geometry to this environment and lock it to our work planes yeah. I'm just going to grab a rectangle draw tool and I'm not going to snap to any of these lines for now I'm going to work from this quadrant to this quadrant and hit escape twice reselect my line and then create a form so as we've done in previous videos the next is the um, 
is the crucial bit. We're going to use the align tool. Now aligning is a good way of rapidly um, designing where you've got elements already in the correct place or plane and you can make other elements align to them. But what we can also do with align is it gives us the opportunity to lock objects to one another. So that's what we're going to do. So select the align tool, select the work plane, select the face, make sure you're not selecting that bottom line or the side or the corner, you want to select the face and once it's jumped over lock it down. With the command still active I can do that work plane, that face, lock it down. The command is still active, I'm just going to orbit work plane, face, lock it down. Work plane, face, lock it down. Okay, so now we have our geometry locked to our work planes. We can visually just check that by clicking and holding pushing these work planes around and you see it's driving the geometry but if you want to double check just go into this environment here and flex the model again so again always make sure you flex the model okay so we've copied our two originals out we've renamed them and we've added parameters which are now driving our geometry let's jump to an elevation view and we can start controlling the height of our geometry. We could copy up this ground floor work plane and make another one, but I want to show you that you can add your own as a reference plane upon here in draw. Draw a reference plane across, escape off, reselect, give it a name. I'm going to call mine top. You can see now it's named as top. I'm going to jump back to the 3D view, use my align tool, select my new top reference plane, select the top of the form and close that down. Jump back to my elevation view, select the align dimension tool again, ensure that I'm selecting the work planes not the geometry, click that off, I'm just going to change my scale select it again, add a parameter, call it height, but this time I'd like uh, to demonstrate what instance parameters are, so let's make this one an instance and we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, jump back to the 3D view and again best practice go to our family types and make sure that that is working for us. Zero in that. Okay, that's working fine. Okay, so we'll continue this demonstration in the next video. Thank you.